Welcome back to the Realm of Unpopular Opinions. It has been a while, but I am going to be talking about everything I read in September. It's been a hectic month because the pre-university time is always a little bit stressful and uncertain because you're not getting any information and then when you do get information you're panicking about said information and then the whole classes thing is starting and you are relocating your will to live. But that aside, I didn't read that much in September, so I don't think this will be long. I hope it's still entertaining and so we can catch up a little bit. I hope this changes in October because it will be the only escapism that I have at this point. I will again lump these two together because I do not own them so I it's easier to talk about it this way but I read the last two Boongo Stray Dogs light novels that was number three and Beast. Now I'm gonna have not that much to say even though I have a lot to say but I will explain in a second. Now the first one is a two-parter the only one so far that is a two-parter the first chunk is the detective agency thinking what to do for Atsushi's entrance exam and the second half is about the founding of the agency and how Rampo and Fukuzawa met. Now I didn't complete the first chunk because where I read it it wasn't finished but I read the entirety of the founding of the detective agency and I loved that so much. They were never my favorite characters but I love them so much. Like the books shine in comparison to the manga because this person, Kafka Sagiri, is really, really strong at writing, which doesn't really come out that much in the manga because essentially all he has to do is write dialogue. But it was lovely. I actually loved the characters of Fukuzawa and Rampo way more than I thought I would. I thought I would be very bored, but I loved it so much and I understood the Rampo a whole lot more. So I would recommend this as <laughs> as essential reading if you are a fan of his, but also if you're not because it really explains a lot. And there was a cameo by one of my favorite characters that didn't make me cry, but it is a fitting transition into what I'm gonna say next and that is Beast. The Beast novel. I will not be talking about that ever, so do not ask me to, because I gave it one star. I gave the third novel five stars. My rating system is not that precise, but I one stars are very rare because if a book was objectively bad, like I didn't like it, didn't attach to anything, couldn't get into it, it will get two stars. One stars is more severe because it did get me emotionally invested and then it did something that hurt me without reason. <laughs> One stars are a bit more emotional. They're not necessarily worse in the way that they are made, but they are worse in the way that they made me feel than two stars. Like for example, Uprooted was a two star, but Crooked Kingdom and Beast, the novel, were both one stars. They are not horribly made compared to Uprooted, but they hurt me in a way that I can't forgive, so that's a one star in my book. This got a one star, absolutely. I do not need to explain much. If you have read it and you know who my favorite character is, I think you can understand why it was a one star. I will not be talking about it. I didn't want to read this one because I knew how it would affect me, but I did not need to sob in the middle of the night. I did not need to. So <laughs> I will never buy this one. I will never read this one again. I will not watch it if it's ever adapted. I do not even want to pretend that it exists because I just do not want to go in depth. I could talk for like an hour probably about every single detail and why it was wrong but I do not want to. If you are interested, you can, I don't know, message me on one of the social medias. But if you've read it and you know who my favorite character is, I think you get why this was very hurtful. <laughs> the next one is <laughs> The Call of Cthulhu by Lovecraft. This is just the collection. This is what I read it from. 
I wanted to read One Cthulhu, One Cthulhu, <laughs> One something by Lovecraft to explain about Cthulhu because I'd seen him on like so many TikTok edits played to the song Hoist the Colors that I was really interested at this point. But I just do not like or appreciate Lovecraft's style at all. I feel like it would make for good television. Not good television, but visually appealing television. I did not care for his writing style at all. He writes like a college professor, which maybe he was. I didn't bother to check. But I literally felt like I was reading research papers. It wasn't a story. It was just a retelling of something that someone heard. But it's still all fictional. I was just extremely bored and Call of Cthulhu is actually like, what, 40 pages <laughs> long? So considering that I was severely bored, that should tell you everything that you need to know. I think I gave it like three stars, 2.5. It's a three on Goodreads. Do not like Lovecraft at all, but I thought I should give it a shot because I was really interested in Cthulhu at this point. So now I, I did give it a shot. And I looked it up, this was the first time he is mentioned, so I didn't like read book five about Cthulhu or something, this was the first place where he is mentioned. The next two I will also talk about together because they are by the same author, and that is the Tess Garrison, what do you call it, thrillers, <laughs> thrillers, that was the word, my brain is mush. But I tried out The Apprentice last year, did not care for it. But I was going to try give it a shot anyway because I really want to see what the deal is about thrillers and my parents had the entire collection by her. So I picked up Vanish because I just, I didn't want to go in order, I just looked up which concept seemed interesting to me. This one did seem interesting to me but it wasn't that interesting. It was better than the last one but I found myself caring about the victims way more than the main characters. <laughs> I could not wait for the perspective of one of the two girls but I was just sighing every time Jane came up. <laughs> now I, this is after two books, Mora was barely a character, like true in these two books but it is called like a, a Resilient Isles thriller and two entire books Mora was barely a character <laughs> and she is way more interesting to me than Jane is so did not appreciate any time Jane came on page, but I really, really loved the story of the book, which is why I gave it four stars. I didn't judge it based on the characters, I judged it based on the entire case of the book. Because for me, as I've noticed so far, thrillers are pointless if you're reading for the characters. Because if what they're doing is boring, I'm not really going to be interested in it. No one reads thrillers for the characters and who they're going to marry and who they're going to end up with. You read it for the cases and the things they solve and the things they go through. So I liked this because the case was interesting and I think well done. But if Jane wasn't the protagonist, this probably would have been the five star for me because I just don't, I don't appreciate her character at all. Like not even a little bit. Maybe because this entire book was centered around her pregnancy which I could not care less about, but I just don't do not like her character. That is all I can say, but I really love the thriller aspect and I think it's worth it. And on that note, I picked up The Killing Place, which I gave five stars. This was, this was exactly what I wanted out of a thriller. And this is the first time that I ever got it. It says you're cold, you're scared, you're lost. Exactly. <laughs> I was cold and scared. This was the first thriller ever that I was reading at night and I didn't really like the fact that I was reading it at night. I was also disgusted. I was disturbed. I was uncomfortable <laughs> and I did fall in love with the characters this time because the MC is Mora. <laughs> so of course I fell in love with the characters and I said it will get better as soon as she is the MC. I really love going through the scenes inside her head and not Jane's. So this was absolutely a hit. Five stars. This is what made me open the thrillers and I will pick up the next two after this one because they seem interesting and apparently the the person that Mora meets also comes back. I loved that relationship and dynamic. But yes, this is everything a thriller <laughs> should have evoked in me. And I thought I would never find it, but I did. All of the feelings just came out when I was reading this. 
and everything fell into place and I was spooked and I was entertained, which is all that I wanted from the other two, <laughs> which were both from Jane's perspective. I think we have learned something here. It was just a short clip, but I reread Diary of a Wimpy Kid, the movie diary, movie diary. And this copy is literally so battered because I read it so much as a kid. It has those glossy pages and it has like information about how each of the three movies were made. Those movies are still classics. Like, I don't care. <laughs> the movies are still classics. I will rewatch them as comfort watches. It was the perfect adaptation in my opinion. Like everything was great and everything that they changed made sense. And they were just so much fun. So I just reread this for the hell of it and I loved it. This is such a nostalgic kick for me. But the movie version in particular, I always found fascinating for some reason because it told you everything about what they adapted and how and why. And I think that was really interesting. Lastly and finally, I finished The Great Hunt. I will not be holding this up because it's really heavy. I just want to let you know that there's a lot of tabs, just like Eye of the World. I don't think you can see that that well. Finally finished it. It took me like a month and a half, almost. I started it like mid-August and I finished it beginning of October. That's why I'm shoving it in here because I don't want to put it in October. I mostly read it during September. I mean, five stars. It was excellent. I loved it. As soon as I sit down and read it, I read a lot. It's just that I didn't read, <laughs> I didn't pick it up for a while. That's why it lasted so long took me so long to read but I loved it and now I think I'm caught up on everything that has to do with the show <laughs> so I can just info dump when the things do come out even if I don't watch it I will probably be exposed to a lot of internet opinions so loved it read it it was an excellent reread and I can't wait to go into Dragon Reborn honestly I have a couple things I want to do before that but you can't finish Great Hunt and love it and not immediately want to go into Dragon Reborn that concludes this video. It was short and hopefully not too boring. Let me know what you have been reading in September, maybe what you have been reading in October too, because apparently I've just been way too busy to talk to anyone. But why am I wearing flowers? Because I really love this headband. It has nothing to do with autumn. And yet here we are. It's finally cold enough for me to wear long sleeves, which is excellent i love the autumn aesthetic even though it just goes straight to winter here we used to have seasons but now we don't anymore let me know if you have seasons i'm very interested because global warming is a bitch and it just goes straight straight from like 38 degrees to 7 here within a month like at this point it is so bone chillingly cold that i can't believe like two weeks ago i had to go out in shorts so yeah this is a bit of a weather ramble. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you are all enjoying your reading. Let me know what you have read in September and what you loved. What you think about what I have read because I always want to know that. And I'm happy to be back. I will see you in the next video.